please welcome Gina Davis. <laughs> to have you here. Um, oh, goodness. Where to start, honestly? But we, we must start having seen that sort of incredible clip from, from Thelma and Louise uh, driving off the cliff to get away from the authorities. And you've spoken about the impact of this movie over right. the years and indeed how it changed your life in many respects. Right. And it's, right. you still feel that after 30 years. Yes, yes, yeah. It had a, a, an enormous impact on my life. And uh, it was partly because it was you know, and uh, I, I wanted to be in this movie so bad once I read it, and then I got to be in it. Um, but it was it was uh, co-starring with Susan Sarandon, which had the most impact on my life because somehow I had gotten to my 30s without ever having spent time with a woman who doesn't apologize for existing, basically. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. because every sentence I ever said started with, I don't know what you'll think, this is probably a stupid idea. And... Uh, and just the first day I met her, and to see how she moves through the world, it just says what she thinks. And people don't fall over and say, oh my God, that's so shocking that she <laughs> said what she thinks. So it, like, it was such an education for me. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. sounds like, because it was a big moment for female empowerment for us, but it sounds like it was too for you. Yeah. And I, I'm so um, delighted at the title of your memoir, because, oh. you know, uh, dying of politeness is something in the UK a lot of us do. But it is our culture, especially for women, to be people pleasers. Right. How do you come back from that? How do you change being that person and put those boundaries in place? Well, it's taken a while, a long time. Uh, you know, the route is very circuitous, but, uh, but yeah, I have become more, oh, I, I mean, I feel like my, I figured out that my mission in life is to close the gap between when something happens and I'm able to react authentically to mm -hmm. it. You know, I mean, I had such a constant horrible case of thinking of what I should have said later or what I should have done later. And, um, but, it, you know, it's, it's, much, it's much better now. I mean, re reading your book, a lot of that comes from your childhood, yes. doesn't it? You do a lot about your childhood and the politeness of your parents. And I love the anecdote where you're dri being driven home by your uncle with right. his erratic driving all over the road. And right. your parents, rather than saying, could you stop, we'll get out, just moved you into the middle of them yes, yes. to cushion you from any inevitable impact. Well, I think they thought I would die a little less <laughs> in the middle, forgetting about that I would have a straight shot out the windshield. But, uh, so you think it's more of a learned, the politeness is more of a learned behavior than something that's inherently in you? Oh, well, yeah, I, I yeah. mean, it was from the very, very beginning that, uh, that, I mean, that's how my parents were. New Englanders are, guess, I guess, kind of like, uh, like you're saying, you are in in that they're insanely polite, and it's not just polite, but uh, the 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 best thing you could do is have no needs, don't need anything mm. from anybody else. No, 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 thank you. you Take know. up no space. Yeah, mm. and uh, don't mind me. I, you know, I don't. I'm I'm uh, undeserving or whatever. So yeah. So what do you do with your own children? You've got three children. Do, it, do you just? sort of hope that they empower themselves or do you sort of oh, no. sit them down and tell them? Well, you know, I think a lot of it is modeling. I picked up more from the way my parents modeled their behavior than, um, than telling me how to be. But uh, so I, I'm just really grateful that I had children in my 40s. Mm -hmm. mm. And I, I wanted to wait, uh, hoping that I could still have kids, but I thought I'll be more evolved mm. the later, the longer I wait because I, I did have a sense that I wasn't, um, I didn't have a lot of self-esteem, I guess is what you'd call it, but I, I was really uh, determined that my kids would, would have self-esteem. Yeah. I just want to speak to you. Obviously, Thelma and Louise, I loved you in Beetlejuice, I have to say. Thank one you. of my favourites. And, and The Fly. But there's, they're all three different types of films. Right. Um, I loved reading that you make your acting choices with women in mind. So right. I wanted to know, how do you go about make, making those choices? Well, that, that happened after uh, Thelma and Louise came out when I saw the reaction of women. It was, if they recognised me, it was completely different from if they... So Beetlejuice or something, they <clears throat> wanted to <clears throat> share with me how it impacted their life and changed their life and, and, I, and, and how inspired they were. <clears throat> and I thought, wow, we don't give women enough opportunities to come out of a movie mm. feeling inspired by the female characters. And men, almost every movie they watch, they mm. can identify with the male characters. So that's when I decided, okay, that I'm going to really keep in mind 
what are the women in the audience going to think about my character? You know, and plus, I want to play interesting, bold characters anyway. It's just mm. more fun. Yeah. Yeah. But you took that information to the industry as well, Gina. You wanted to sort of almost fight back a bit where it was all about equality and, and it was a very important thing. It was off the back of watching something with your little girl that you suddenly yes. realised. Right, right. Who, who is there to aspire to here? Yeah. And you decided to actually study it. It, it. it was the very first thing I sat down to watch with her. She was a toddler. I said, oh, let's watch a preschool show. And within five minutes, I was like, how many female characters are on this show? And then I saw it everywhere, mm -hmm. in movies and videos and everything. Mm -hmm. And there just was a, a huge gender disparity in what we're showing little kids in the 21st Absolutely. century. And I'm like, so we're teaching kids to have gender bias by what you know the culture mm -hmm. is reflecting. So well, yeah. I want to ask you also, um, you're saying about having children in, in your 40s and also in your 40s, which is quite late, you got diagnosed with ADD. Yes. How did that come about? What led you to looking for that diagnosis? Uh, I, I had started with a, uh, a therapist. I had started with a therapist and I think by the second session she said, uh, has anyone ever told you you have ADD? And I said, well, no, I can't because I'm not hyperactive. I'm profoundly not hyperactive. And she said, no, but you can have it without hyperactivity. I didn't know that. So no. how was it presenting in you? What's that? How was it presenting in you? How, oh, what did she pick up well, on? You know, I carried a, a huge burden of shame my, most of my life because I thought there was something wrong with me, you know, like a, a character flaw or something, because I couldn't finish a lot of things or I couldn't start a lot of things. And uh, I mean, some things I would become obsessed with and take it as far as it can go, but other things I just couldn't do and, and it was very shameful. I found it very shame, shameful and something I didn't want people to know. But then when I found out there's a reason mm -hmm. <laughs> for this, you know, sense. and it's Strange not light. that I'm clarity, uh, a bad yeah. person, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it changed a lot. Yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. so interesting. You've got the diagnosis. It's all there. Archery being one of your passions, yes. but exactly, can you believe that you just decided I'm going for this? And you really did. You yes. made championships and mm -hmm. all sorts of things. You were, you, yeah. You're just wow. a... And you joined Mensa, Mensa. such an Mensa. underachiever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. You're the perfect loose woman, Jane. If you're free next week, <laughs> come back and join us. We'd yeah. love to have you. Uh, Gina Davis, Dying of Politeness, um, a memoir, and it's out now, and it's a, it's a beautiful book and a beautiful cover. Thank actually. you. Actually, we love Thank that. You. Yeah, we like that very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Gina you. Davis. <laughs>